Hi, and welcome to Working for Everyone. I'm Rich Starr, and my guest today is Linda Pischel. Linda, you're Hi, a Richard. regular on this show. You've been here so many times. It's great to have you. Thank you. And I understand you're really in the mood to make an easel. This, you couldn't pick a better person for this project. Why? Because I love to paint. That's perfect. And also, you have two small kids. And yeah, this, this is, one's going to be for me. This one's really <laughs> fine. I think it's great. The, the re, one of the reasons I like this easel is that it's so easy to adjust. Just a little turn on the wing that locks it very snugly, and it loosens up and moves very easily into any other setting. So it's real versatile. And one of the keys to the design of this easel is the fact that this piece of plywood is not rectangular, but trapezoidal. In other words, it's smaller at the top than at the bottom, which allows the legs to splay out. It gives it a good spread down on the floor, which makes it steady Sturdy. this way. Yeah. Let me show you how I did that, because it's real simple. Now, the measurements I'm going to give you are you know, arbitrary. They're the ones I used, and they're in the plans. But um, you can use this style of easel to make lots of different sizes, higher, smaller, wider, whatever. I started with a 20-inch square piece of plywood. And I just measured in two inches from the corner, both sides, and just from that two inch mark, drew a straight line down to the opposite corner. Okay. Real simple way to get a trapezoid. And that's what gives the right. whole easel its interesting yeah. stance. And I think it's a neat looking shape, too. Oh, yeah. Well, you need that. It's almost like the traditional sure. teepee style. Sure. Now, I think the fun in this project is making those neat adjustments. And so we're going to make one of the upper front legs first. And I chose a wide piece of wood. This is about two and a half inches wide. Uh, this is the part that goes behind the plywood, sticks out a little bit. Then there are these spacers. Okay. And this is the outer segment of the leg. And when we glue it all together, and we're going to screw it together too, which makes it good and sturdy, mm -hmm. it needs to be strong, it gives us a slot. All right. Now, these spacers are three quarters of an inch square, which is the original thickness of the board. And I just ripped them into strips three quarters of an inch this way. So they're three quarters of an inch square. And we're going to use pieces this size to go on the piece that slides in here, too, as you'll see later. So hang on to these. You're going to need a bunch of them. OK. OK, I've already cut a bunch of them, as you'll see in a little while. But first, put this in a vise, and let's put this together. Real simple. Yeah, that's fine. OK. Now, it's going to be right here. So put a little bit of glue, little glue here. right under where it would go. And I'll do this end. So this is basically uh, made up of all just strips of wood. Yeah, it's kind of laminated in a way. It's made in layers instead of cutting a slot out of the middle of one solid piece. I put glue on top of that one. Instead of cutting a slot out of one solid piece, we glue together three pieces with a section missing in the right. middle. And it's a real easy way to make a slot. OK, now let's just set that right on top. And. Um, I'm going to mark where I'd like the screws to go because we want to make sure they're not too close to the end. We're going to be cutting the ends. So that gives us plenty of room between the end and the first screw. If we have to make a cut in here, which we will, on one of the ends anyway, no, on right. both of the ends, to make it they're going to be cut. They're different straight. cuts, okay. but you'll see. We just want to make sure that the screws don't get in the way of the whatever cuts we need to make. And I'm going to put a clamp. Here's a clamp for you, Linda. I'm going to put a clamp right between those two X marks. And before I make it too tight, I am going to even, even up the surface. Mine okay. doesn't. You I want put it, it in between, between there? them. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get us yeah, both a piece of paper okay. towel because this glue is squeezing out. Yeah. <laughs> Can you use some for your fingers? You want this really oh, okay. even. You make right? it really even. I'll wipe the extra glue off over here while you're doing it. Wipe the extra glue off over here, too. Okay, now we're not going to put scrap wood under the clamps as we often do on furniture right. to prevent the clamps from dinging up the wood because we're going to be sanding this anyway, and whatever dings there are will disappear. 
Now we're going to pre-drill for the, for the screws because these are very long screws. They're two and a half inch screws. And there's some risk of splitting the wood if we didn't pre-drill. So I have an eighth inch drill in this electric drill. And just drill down as far as you can and pull it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need to drill. Stop, Linda. Stop for a second. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it from here and I see you're tilted. You Am need I to make tilted? sure that you're straight this way. Yep, that's perfect now. And you want to pull it up with a drill running, which pulls the shavings out of the hole. Okay. okay. And... These wireless electric drills and wireless screwdrivers These are, great. are just wonderful. <laughs> as much as I love hand tools, I'm hooked on wireless, I'm sorry, wireless, yeah. here you go, wireless um, Thank you. hand tools for this kind of thing. Make your life quick. Whoa, we Whoa. left that in reverse. Here. Oh, all right. It's a good idea to check before you run it, but I never do. There you go. Now we're working in pine, and it's neat Do to go just tighten it down. enough so that the head countersinks itself just a little bit below the surface. That's fine. Like that. Here's another one for you. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and drill these, too. on this clamp. You can take that clamp off now, Linda. Okay. That thing's as tight as it's ever going to get. It's not going to go anywhere, right? Yeah, even if the glue, you know, after the glue dries, I don't think it's going to be much stronger than when it's held by these wonderful screws. There we go. Okay. You got some extra glue to clean up? You I just wiped mine up. off. Already. Good. Let's take a look at what take we have. Take it out? Yep. There we are. Wow, that looks great. It's one leg, quick and easy. Really? Now, what I like to do at this point is set it up right under the plywood in the position it will be. I leave a little bit of overhang here. You'll see why later. There's a washer that has to fit here. It can't hit the plywood. Oh, and okay. up at the top, we'll just make a line here so that the angle of the leg matches the angle of the top there. And down below here, we'll do this little angle here just so it looks nice. Just make sure when you do this that you leave enough room so that you don't hit the screw. In. Hit the screw. Right. And we'll trace this on the opposite, opposite leg after you've made it. Why don't you go ahead to the bandsaw and cut both those lines. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Looks good to me. Okay. Uh, all three legs oh. done now. Great. I'll just put them here in place on the plywood so you see how they go with the tapers on the Both outer legs out, right. uh, like that. And you notice how the inner leg is made up of two equal pieces rather than one wide one because it's in the center and it doesn't need to be attached to the plywood at all. So that will go there. And we also have the bottoms of the legs made and I've tapered the bottom of the leg. It goes like this. Here, I'll show you how it, it will slide down. Oh, all right. Okay, and I've tapered the bottom of the leg, so it's narrower on this end, just for looks. It looks, and it also actually physically lightens the thing. It doesn't mm -hmm. need to be as thick down here. So here's a leg. It's the sliding portion of the leg, and here's the slot, and here's one of those three-inch pieces it's identical to the pieces we had down here. Okay. Remember? This is the part that's going to slide and up and down. This is the part that's going to slide up and down. But when we put it in the slot, because it's the same size as the spacers in the leg, it's very, very tight. So would you put that in the vise like this and take that lovely little block plane and just take about three or four shavings off of it and do it on this way. Oh, this that way? This is the same orientation as the pieces here. This is the rough side. You can see the little saw marks on it. All right. Turn the Wait a minute. There you go. Backwards. That's a real old block plane. It's a wonderful tool. You think a little more? I bet that's enough. Okay, let's see. All right, because right. you want it see? loose enough to go loose very smooth. All the way to the end. Sometimes it'll be free in the middle, but it gets tighter near the ends. But that's 
perfect. I'm just going to make a mark on the top. I'm going to X that part there because that'll be, we know that's the part we want to see when we put it in the right. slot. Now, I'm going to take the sliding section of the leg and put it under the slot and get that straight edge even, right? I've got the tapered edge on the same side as the taper of the top part right. of the leg. Okay, so that's tapered here and the straight edge here. I've got it perfectly even. My thumbs are making it even. I'm going to make a couple of lines in here, which will help us position that little block, which is going to fit okay. here like that. Okay. That's right, because the block itself doesn't actually move. No, that's going to be fastened tight to this sliding section of the leg. And I'd like you to take the eighth inch drill and just pop a couple of eighth inch holes right through there like that. Very good. Okay. Now we're going to pre-drill these holes, not only to prevent the wood from splitting when the screw goes through, but also to help us find the positions of the holes when we turn this thing over on the other side. It's kind of using a drill hole as a locator. Now let's just run a little glue here. I think the glue and the screws make this really, really solid. And we'll get that right lined up with those two little lines there and clamp it in place. Can you hold it so it doesn't yeah. move while I tighten it? I think this can go over a little bit this way. Sometimes four hands in a woodworking shop are just what the doctor ordered. I think that's okay. Let's see. Yeah. You know what? What? That screw would get in the way. Let's do it this way. Oh, if we're going to turn right. it over, remembering where to put your clamps is another little <laughs> thing. Called that, foresight. That's right. Clampology. I think I could write a book on clampology. Okay, now we're going to use inch and a quarter sheetrock screws because they'll just come out short of going through an inch and a half piece of, uh, two pieces of three quarter inch pine boards put together, come out to an inch and a half. These inch and a quarter screws are very handy because you know they won't go all the way through two layers of pine shelving boards. So I use inch and a quarter oh. sheetrock screws quite often. It split a little bit at the end? Yeah. Did I do it too tight? Is that why? Well, you might have. We have a little split right over okay. here, chip. but a little chip. I don't think it's going to do any harm. So it won't affect the, uh, the strength of it? Really. No, I think it'll be fine. You, you made that screw very tight. It pulled okay. way down into the wood. Okay. Um, I need to get a piece of uh, paper towel because we should have had one here. Whenever you're using glue, See all that extra towel, that's, that extra glue that's squeezed out? We don't want that there. Now the problem is to drill a hole for the bolt. And it's a pretty big hole. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> and it's a pretty narrow piece of wood. So I'm going to put this hand screw, this kind of parallel wooden clamp, parallel jaw wooden clamp is called a hand screw. And it's very neat for putting pressure over a wide surface. You see, it's actually going to squeeze this much wood together mm -hmm. very neatly, and it's also quite compact. Now, that's going to prevent that block of wood from um, splitting as we run the drill through. Right. And I'm going to ask you to clamp this to the scrap wood while I change drill bits here. You need to get that right up on here. Oh, up on here? Right. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Now before we drill this, I'll explain about this kind of carriage bolt. This is a bolt called a carriage bolt. It's got a round head. Okay, it doesn't have mm -hmm. a hex head or a slotted head. It's round. And under the head is this neat little square section that jams into the hole that it's pushed through and keeps the carriage bolt from turning. So it's very neat looking and very shallow. So you end up like hammering this through yeah, once we're gonna you get do done that. screwing we'll it? do that in just a second. All it's right. also a half inch bolt. So we're gonna drill a 17, 16th diameter hole. I'll do this one. So that the bolt will fit very, very tight.
Good, that's done. Okay. One more thing before we put the bolt in, Linda. Can you undo that clamp? Sure. Notice how this little block here is exactly even with the sides of the slot? Right, you don't want that. No, we don't. What do we need? You need it to be down a little so you can fit the uh, washer in The there. washer needs to press on the sides right. of the slot and not on this block. So if I can have that block plane over there. It's a block plane for planing blocks. Nobody's quite sure why they call it a block plane, but <laughs> it's appropriate in this setting. Okay, now let's see. It doesn't have to be down very far. Right, Just like okay. an eighth, a sixteenth of an inch. It's, this is down further than it needs to be. I'm going to put this clamp back on so that the wood doesn't split. We don't need that. You don't need that. No, we just need to set it across the open vise. Okay, see I'm resting it on both jaws of the vise to support it. Let's see if I can do it better. And just sink it so it looks quite neat. Okay. okay. Take the clamp off and let's try it in the slot. the washer on, the wing nut, slides easy, there you go. and it locks perfectly. Now do you ever have to wax this down at you all? You could wax it a little bit, it would run smoother. Go ahead, let's make, let's go ahead and make the other row legs and we can okay. put the whole thing together. Good. Well Linda, we finished making all the sliding leg sections and it's all ready to get assembled into one piece. Okay. And here we have the left and right top sections of the legs and I'm going to look at the one right in front of me here. We need to have room for the washer to clear the plywood. Okay. Right? And the washer is about in here. I'll leave a little extra room. I'm going to make a pencil mark like that. Okay? Then I'm going to take the marking gauge. This is a tool that makes lines parallel to an edge of a board. Right. You've used this, this one before, mm -hmm. I think. I remember that. And I'm going to set it so the, the cutter the marking gauge is right about on that line, okay? And that <clears throat> will give us a place to nail that onto. Line up the plywood. Now I need to do it on this one. I'm gonna turn it this way. So that I've turned it because the fence of the marking gauge needs to run on the outer edge of the leg. So this being the opposite leg. This should come out right now. Okay. So th the idea of those lines is that's where the plywood meets. Right. Okay. And we're just going to glue it down. And I have the glue and I'll do my side and then you can do your side. Put a little glue on it. Like that. Spread it a bit. It'd really be good to... Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't have to be too well spread. I okay, want you to do that on your side. All right. And I'm going to line the plywood up with that mark, even at the top. Line up all along. When you're done, let's stick it under there so that it can... We want this plywood level. I don't want it tipping down on your side so that there'd be a space under here. It's resting evenly on both sides now. And I'm going to uh, be nailing kind of a zigzag, Linda, like this. Okay, we don't want to go too far in because You'll miss you know how much wood right. there is under here. We've got about an inch and a half of wood, so I don't want to go this far in. I'm just going to guess. Okay. If you're not sure, you can sort of make a, a line along here, but I can see where the wood is. Mm -hmm. Can you? All right, yeah. Okay. You want to mark yours or you just want to do it by eye? That's fine, either way. You can make little X's for yourself to sort of space them out. And uh, these are three quarter inch brads going into a quarter inch of plywood and three quarter inches of pine, so they're the ideal length. They go half, you know, more than halfway into the pine. And there we go. Well, after Linda and I finished nailing the plywood to these side pieces, we cut out a spacer here that stiffens the plywood and brings this up level. So we have a three-quarter inch thick ring, sort of U-shaped piece of mm -hmm. pine all the way around. And we're going to be attaching the back leg to that in a minute. Here's the ledge I made. This is um, 
to keep your paintbrushes from rolling off in right. your lap, <laughs> right? It's a three-quarter inch piece of pine with a slightly thinner than three-quarter ledge here. Mm -hmm. It's just glued and nailed on from the bottom. Okay. And look, we've drilled some pilot holes here for the screws. This ledge fits exactly between, I mean, it's exactly the same length as the bottom right. of the plywood and comes out exactly even with the bottom of the plywood. That's a okay. nice wide ledge. I like yeah, because you can put a real thick yeah. um, pad on there and still have room for your brushes and charcoals or what have you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to feel this with my fingers to get it centered and level. I'm going to hold this up level for you. Can you get it? I think so. That was... Yeah, I got it even on my side. All right. In there. Looks good. Let me Drop drag this. the center first. That'll be fine. It doesn't matter. Sure. Good. Three screws are plenty strong enough to hold this thing on. Ooh, those go in there real good right at the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. Lovely. These are those inch and a quarter sheetrock screws again. Yeah, that looks neat. Yeah, that was quick. Getting closer and closer to having a... Mm -hmm. A real easel. Huh? ...opportunity to do your painting. Now, let me turn this sideways so you can see why this is built this way. Here's the back leg, all assembled. And I made this little triangular piece of wood that screws to the back leg and it gets wider as it goes up, which means that I can use a wider hinge. Mm -hmm. This is a piano hinge again. We've used this a couple of times in the last few programs because it's so strong and it doesn't have any play oh, right. in it. And um, finish screwing that last screw in. We were working on that. These are tiny screws, but there are so many of them that they're quite sturdy. And one of the reasons for this block here is it acts as a spacer to bring this sliding section of the leg even with these oh, right. parts, you know, the outer legs of the easel here. If it weren't for the spacer, this part of the leg, the and, upper part of the leg would right. be low, one level of pine lower and it would fold sticking mm -hmm. up. It wouldn't fold flat. So That's what true. we need to do now is take that screwdriver, electric screwdriver, and pop all these screws in. Okay. And yeah, this, this is... This has got to be even up here, right? Okay, good. This is an extra layer of pine up here which reinforces the whole thing even further. There we go. That's harder. Whoop. <laughs> Move that over for you. You can reach it better. You know why I like these screws so much? Why? Because you can take stuff apart if it goes together <laughs> wrong. Okay, let's put these legs back in. Get this thing right. standing up. Want to flip it first? Well, yeah, let's flip it first. It's because the wing nuts face the user. Right. User friendly. Because the back wing nut faces the back. You have to walk around to adjust that one. But. I think it's user friendly anyway. Okay, let's bring it right down. All the way bottom. down? Yep. Now let's stand up. Okay. okay. The last thing to do on this easel, it's going to slip if you don't hold it because it doesn't have its chain yet. Oh, right. Uh, this is a window sash chain. You find out how far back you like it to go. Take some small screws, the size we use for the little hinges are pretty good. They go right through the openings mm -hmm. in the chain and just screw it in place. So you can do your own adjustment Folds then. right up. Linda Pischel, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show one more time. Thank you, Richard. Here's your painter's easel. Make some beautiful art with it. <laughs> I'm Rick Starr. The program is Woodworking for Everyone. Thanks for joining us.
So that you can reproduce the projects demonstrated on this series, Richard Starr has produced plans and instructions for you to follow. For a complete package of all the plans in this series, call 1-800-950-9648. The cost is $14.95 plus shipping and handling. Woodworking for Everyone is made possible through a grant from the Woodworkers Store, a source for specialty hardwares, tools, wood, and know-how, with home offices in Rogers, Minnesota, and retail outlets coast to coast.